let's talk about how much energy something has when it is orbiting another object. So whenever something orbits another object, we call it a satellite. That doesn't matter if it's like a telecommunication satellite or a GPS thing or a moon, it doesn't matter. So um, let's start first with a circle because that's easiest because 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 the um, the velocity will stay the same the whole time. Okay, so let's say we have um, something in the middle of mass capital M and an object orbits it in a circle. Pretend this is a circle at a radius of R. Okay and this is some object with a mass of little m. Okie dokie. Note that if it's circling it, it has some velocity v, okay, tangent. That's supposed to be tangent. It's not oh, actually very good, but let's pretend it's late. Okay, alrighty. So let's just find the total energy of this thing. That let's just total energy. Well, We've got two kinds of energy that could be happening here. We've got kinetic and we've got gravitational potential energy. So let's do those in pieces. Gravitational potential energy between two objects, when you have two objects uh, a certain distance apart, is given by negative g um, m1, n2, so m1 is big M, m2 is little m, divided by the distance between them. Alrighty, where u uh, equals zero at an infinite separation. So here r is the radius of the satellite's orbit, assumed for the time being to be circular, and the m's are the two masses, and we've, um, yeah, that's about it. So what about the kinetic energy? There's nothing really more to say about this. The kinetic energy, we have a little bit more to say, I know in general kinetic energy is um, one half m v squared, so somehow I have to figure out what v is, but that's not too bad. If I um, think about Newton's second law for this for this mass, okay, so f net equals mass times acceleration. Well, the only force acting on this thing is force of gravity, so I can reinforce, replace the force of gravity or sorry, F net with the force of gravity, which is G M M over R squared. On this side, I've got my little m, and then the acceleration of this is the centripetal acceleration, which is V squared over R. All right. Oh, good. There, I've got a V. That's awesome. So I can, now I'm just going to solve it for V. Well, little m's go away. One of the R's goes away. Oh, well, V just solved for me, didn't it? Haha. <laughs> In fact, I'm not going to solve for v, I'm just going to solve for v squared. I get that g m over r equals v squared. So now I can put that in there, and I get that the doo -doo -doo, kinetic energy is 1 half little m times g big M over r. Just going to clean that up a little bit. Let's see what I get is. Uh, G big M little m over 2R if I clean it up. All right. Okay, so now I have to add them together. Let's come back over here. So the total energy of an object in a circular orbit, well, that's their kinetic, that's the potential. Add them together, and I get uh, what's G M M over 2R minus, because remember this is negative, g m m over r. Well, geez, those look awfully similar, don't they? In fact, if I make these common denominators and put them together, I end up with e is negative. That's funny, it's negative. g big M little m over 2r. So this is where we're running into that weird convention about energy being negative. We can do that. It's okay. So for something in a circular orbit, and I should write that. This is circular orbit. For a circular orbit, the total energy is always negative, 
n is equal to negative g, mass of the, the, the thing being orbited, mass of the thing orbiting over two times the distance between them. Okay, you also might notice that uh, these two look awfully similar. That and this look awfully similar. In fact, for a circular orbit, you could say E is equal to negative kinetic energy. Okay. Now, for an elliptical orbit, all we have to do is replace um, the R with the semi-major axis. So for an ellipse, elliptical orbit, the total energy of a satellite in elliptical orbit is equal to negative g big M little m over 2a, where a is the semi-major axis of the ellipse. Now this is constant. As long as you don't do anything to the satellite, it's just hanging out there doing its orbiting thing, um, the total never, never changes. However, as you go around the ellipse, um, the kinetic and the potential do change because if you're going around an ellipse, I'm going to do a small picture. Really small picture. There we go. It's going around this ellipse here. As you go around the ellipse, when it's way out here on the far end, when it's way out there, um, because it's further away, the potential energy is more, so the kinetic energy would have to be less, so they still add up to the same energy. When it's over here, the potential energy is less, because you're closer together, which means the kinetic energy would be more. So here again, we have that idea that the further away you are, the slower you're moving, and the closer you are, the faster you're moving. But at either place, here or here, when you add up um, u plus k, you get the same number. You get this number. All right, let's do a check. So this is this is an interesting check. I had to think about this a lot <laughs> to, to figure it out. Let's say we have something orbiting the Earth. Okay, so here's my Earth. Earth. All right, and over here at point P, point P, I'm going to release a bowling ball. And this bowling ball, I release it in such a way that it should take a circular path around the Earth and come back to point P. All right, so I let, I let it do that. But then, then at point P, I'm going to fire some thrusters on this bowling ball. I don't know why it has thrusters. It could be a spaceship then. I'm going to fire uh, thrusters forward facing such that it's basically I'm putting the brakes on this thing pretty much. Okay. So at point P, I'm going to put on the brakes a little bit so that, oh, a little, a little bit better. Let's go different color. Here we go. Okay. At point P, I'm going to fire the brakes on this thing so that um, E decreases. Basically, I'm putting on the brakes so the kinetic energy decreases and therefore the overall energy also decreases. Okay. I want to know um, what path it falls at this point. Now, it can't follow a circle anymore because this circle only exists if I'm going a certain speed at this radius. All right. So my choices are two ellipses. I could do an ellipse that um, takes me out a little further and back to point P, or I can follow an ellipse that takes me down a little bit and then back to point P. All right. So which path does it take? So this is the um, this is the big clue right here. E decreases. Now I know for an ellipse or a circle or whatever, well, it's going to be ellipse. So for an ellipse, 
the total energy of the orbiting object has to be negative g m m over 2a. All right. Now, this just went down over here, which means this just became more negative, okay? More negative. Because remember, when you go down, you're subtracting things, right? So this went down. So this side has to be more negative, which means this quantity here has to be a larger magnitude, more negative, larger magnitude. To get a larger magnitude, that means that the semi-major axis has to go down, so you're dividing by a smaller number. So A has to get smaller. All right, semi-major axis has to decrease. So semi-major axis <clears throat> is the distance from the center of the ellipse to the um, to the edge on the longest axis. So for this green one, that's from about here to here. There's A. For the red one, that's about, well, the middle is approximately here to out here is A. And for my original, it was uh, it was from here. It was like here to here. Okay, so oh, a little more. There we go. The only one where it got smaller was the green one. So the green path is my path. That's that's my answer. The green one. It's gonna come closer to Earth and then kind of come back again. Um, second question. To go find it again. Get these questions written down somewhere. Is the orbital period t of this um, bowling ball thing? Um, the time to return to P, is it greater than, less than, or the same as the circular orbit? Okay, so, so that one goes back to the, the law of periods. So going back to Kepler's laws again, the law of periods said that the square of the period was proportional to the cube of the semi-major axis. So it was it was four four pi squared over G big M times R cubed, or in the case of an ellipse, not R but A. Alright. So we just said A went down. So if A goes down, since they're proportional, and I know there's squares and cubes in there, but I'm only asking if period went up or down. I don't know by how much and I don't really care. Um, a went down, period will go down too. So the period also decreases. And I think that's it for this video.